Aren't they beautiful? They're so green. Like a bright spring morning. Moist. As a food stylist, my job is to make food look absolutely beautiful and the best it can be. I have a few tips of the trade to share with you. Things that you can do at home for any meal to make your food a little bit more elevated. Tip number one, blanching green vegetables. Everybody's familiar with the army green green beans that come out of a can and they taste delicious, but not really a vibrant green color that somebody wants to see in a, a photograph or, you know, in this case on your dining room table. So in food styling, we blanch our green vegetables. First, we'll do our broccoli. So the broccoli will take a little bit longer to cook than say a green bean, because it's a little bit more hearty. As soon as you put the broccoli into the hot water, you can immediately see the color change. It turns vibrant green almost instantly. For blanching your broccoli to eat, I would say it probably only takes like three to four minutes for it to get tender, but still crispy. When transferring your cooked green vegetable to an ice bath, you wanna make sure that it's all the way submerged under the water. That way it cools off almost instantly um, and you don't have to worry about your vegetable overcooking. It smells a little farty. <laughs> All right, once your veggie is cooled, we're gonna transfer it to a sheet tray with a paper towel to let it dry. And then we're gonna blanch the green beans. I really love the transformation that green beans take when they're submerged into warm water. The Even right now, looking at these green beans, they're still a little bit almost dusty looking, um, but as soon as I put them in the hot water, you'll be able to see how bright they turn. Stirring the vegetables while they're in the hot water for blanching is really important. So that way they cook evenly and they get even color from the hot water. Green beans probably only take about two to three minutes for them to get tender. Once you've transferred your veggies to the ice bath, they really only need to stay in the water until they're cool enough to touch. But you can leave it in there for two to three minutes just for safe measure. We're gonna transfer the green beans to a paper towel and let them dry out until we're ready to use them again. Today, I blanched broccoli and green beans, but you can blanch any vegetable just as a method of par cooking something and then picking up the cooking method later on. An ice bath is also a great way to revive green herbs and leafy greens. Maybe they've been in your refrigerator for a little too long, or you have a party coming over and you need a quick garnish for something and your herbs look a little sad. You can dip them in an ice bath and it will revive them, boom. Once your herbs seem like they've freshened up a little bit, they may still seem a little droopy because they've been sitting in water. So take them out and put them in a dry paper towel or cloth and allow them to sit just a couple minutes so they can dry off a little bit. Once you've revived your herbs in an ice bath, if you don't need them all, or if you bring home a fresh bunch of herbs from the grocery store, a really great way to make sure you get an extended life on your herbs is by wrapping them in a damp cloth or damp paper towel and storing them in a plastic storage bag, wrapping them in plastic, or just make sure the leafy part of the greens are covered and store them in your refrigerator. Tip number two, roasting your vegetables in a skillet versus an oven. Browning vegetables or meat in a skillet gives you a little bit more control than browning something in the oven. It creates a beautiful, caramelized color, a crispy texture without overcooking anything, which sometimes happens in the oven. My examples today are potatoes, garlic bulbs, and this beautiful blanched broccoli that just showed up. It's gorgeous, don't know how that happened. We're gonna do some of the potatoes in half and some in quarters. We're gonna put the potato cut side down into the pan first. The face of the potato is the part that you want to see the most browning on. When preparing potatoes like this at home, cooking them in a skillet, depending on the size of your potato, may not actually cook the potato all the way through. You can get a nice caramelization, a crispy exterior on those potatoes, and then you can actually either cover them with a lid to allow the steam to cook them the rest of the way through, or yes, then transfer them to the oven. 
See, this nice browning caramelization on this potato happened very fast and it's really beautiful. That golden brown color is perfect. But as you can see with these quartered potatoes, I'm turning each one onto that cut face so it gets an even browning color on each side. And then I'm even flipping them over onto their skin side so even that gets a little bit of color. Our potatoes are beautiful and brown. I'm gonna do the garlic in two ways. The first way I just wanna show you is just like a simple cutting the bulb in half and roasting the two halves. Okay, and the second way I'm going to take a couple cloves out and show you how I would brown those off. So I usually slice garlic from top to bottom and get these elongated slices. Ooh, that got dark real fast. Multitasking. Yeah, that got dark. So I just have sliced two cloves of garlic. So now I'm going to put them in my hot skillet and I'm not going to leave them alone. I'm going to babysit them until they are cooked the way I want them to be cooked. I guess that's sort of a disclaimer for cooking things on a stove top in a skillet versus in the oven. You have more control over the heat, but you have to be there and be attentive to it. Um, if you put something in the oven, generally you can just sort of walk away. I'm gonna try roasting these garlic bulbs again because I got my first ones a little bit too dark. It's not too burned, but I mean, it's still kind of darker than I would like it to be. Oh, it's, it's just so beautiful. It's perfect. Yeah. The last thing I wanna show you how to roast in a skillet is this beautiful blanched broccoli. It literally just takes a couple seconds for this broccoli to start browning. That one's the best one because it's cut on that side. It's able to like lay flat in the skillet and get that beautiful texture on the stalk there. So we have our beautiful skillet roasted vegetables. You couldn't tell necessarily that they were roasted in an oven versus a skillet before, but now you do. I'm really happy with these and I'm Probably gonna eat the crap out of them. Do I have broccoli in my teeth? Tip number three, spritz your food. We're spraying some shiz. With a bowl of fresh berries, some even cut in half, you really wanna make sure they don't dry out. And there's nothing wrong with adding just a little spritz of water, which not only enhances the berries, already beautiful bright color, but you might even get lucky and get a couple water droplets. And for food photography, that's a really cool thing to see. Mm. So nice, so fresh. The same thing with salad greens. If you're entertaining and you're putting a big bowl of fresh mixed greens on the table, just give it a little spritz of water. It'll help a ton keep the veggies crisp and fresh and looking really, really nice. And then for our browned, beautiful casserole, it looks golden and beautiful, but then you add your Pam spray and you can see one side is a little bit more glistening and vibrant and it looks, I'm gonna say moist because that's the proper word to use. If you've seen any of my other videos, specifically the Whopper video, I did use Pam spray to add a glistening sheen to the bun. The same effect is here. It's already beautiful and golden and it looked great, but you add that little bit of oil, that little bit of glisten, and it just really takes it to another level. If using Pam Spray is not your favorite product, you can definitely just do a brushing of oil or even one of your own spritzer bottles full of your favorite cooking oil, like olive oil or even coconut oil. Each of these little tips that really enhance your food are completely edible and completely harmless. You obviously don't wanna to go too over the top with any cooking spray per se or oil, but adding just a touch um, is enough to really set your food apart, especially for um, a gathering, entertaining, holiday meals and that sort of thing. Well, hello there. Tip number four, how to garnish your holiday meat masterpiece. First thing I would like to do is actually incorporate one of my other 
tips that I shared with you guys, which is adding moisture back into food by spritzing it. I actually saved the rendered juices from the ham, which I would like to brush back over the face of the ham to give it some more moisture and some glisten. If you unfortunately threw out any leftover au jus from your meat or vegetables, definitely just use oil or like we talked about before, use your good old fashioned cooking spray. The ham looks great. It looks juicy, moist, it's glistening. Um, it definitely doesn't look dry, which is awesome. So now I think that we can go ahead and garnish. Having a small citrus to garnish your plate will not distract from the main piece of it. It will just add in color and vibrancy um, without being very large and overshadowing your centerpiece. I think having a varied slice on your citrus really adds just sort of like an extra element. So I'm gonna cut a few of these into wedges and then I'm gonna slice a few in rounds. And I'm gonna leave some of my um, lemons just in half. So if you can see, um, slicing this into a wedge from this shape gives you that really clear, like segmented look on that lemon. I also have a couple pomegranates. Um, these are in season, so they do definitely play a role in a lot of holiday garnishes. So I'm just going to prep a couple of these out just in case I decide to use them. If not, obviously they're delicious to eat. What I normally like to do is start with like the leafy green herbs and sort of fill in um, some spaces that maybe I don't want to be seen. So with the sage leaves, I'm taking it and sort of tucking it in and almost making a frame around the face. But we have a couple other things that we're gonna incorporate. I have these beautiful bay leaves, which are also very traditional in fall cooking. You might brine a turkey with it or incorporate it into your stuffing recipe. They're just really nice. I'm also gonna incorporate these really beautiful skillet roasted garlic bulbs. So I kinda want this to be up front. So we're just gonna kinda tuck him in up here next to the sage. And we'll have his partner not too far behind. Does that look good? Friends and family? Family. And now we're going to add in our beautiful sliced citrus. And now since I have two rounds on this side, I'm going to add a lemon wedge back here to give it a little diversity in color, but also a difference in like size and shape. And I'm gonna rotate it back around to the other side and we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna use a different slice. So since I used rounds of oranges on the other side, I think I'm gonna come in and add a round of lemon on this side. And then we'll tuck in some orange wedges back here. And they don't all have to be facing up. We can turn it over so you can see the beautiful skin. This looks really pretty just with those few um, garnishes added onto the platter. But it is also a really good opportunity to get as creative and playful as you would like and incorporate colors. Um, we have cranberries here, which are actually the same color as this pomegranate, which is beautiful. You could do one or the other. Um, the cranberries add a little pop of red, which is really nice. And it also screams fall and Christmas and holidays when you incorporate those cranberries. Just showing you here what incorporating one of those pomegranate wedges would be like. Maybe I would take out this little orange wedge and just bring him in right there. Um, that looks really nice to me too. So maybe we'll just, since we're having fun with this, um, I'll do a little bit of both. We'll have cranberries on one side and like a pomegranate wedge on the other side. Which do you like better? Comment and let me know. What kind of garnishes would you like on your holiday? Whatever. As a final touch, I'm gonna add some delicate thyme leaves to this platter. It really is sort of like maybe one of the last things you add as a filler because it's so petite, but then it's also really tender and you don't want it to get smushed or bruised or anything like that. So I'm tucking a little bit in right here on the side. It also brings back that greenery that we started with and maybe has gotten covered up a little bit by all those other like really beautiful elements. So now we're just like kind of bringing it full circle. 
you can see this is not necessarily the only beautiful part of this platter. You have all these beautiful garnishes along the sides of the platter, uh, which is eye catching at any angle. So it really can serve as a centerpiece for your holiday table. We have moved everything over to our photo setup. And now our photographer is gonna take a final beauty photo of everything we've done. Everything looks really great and I'm super happy with the way everything turned out. If you happen to do any of these tips at home, tag me on Instagram, show me what you've done. We would love to see how you've incorporated these things into your everyday life. And while you're at it, follow Well Done on YouTube and Instagram, and be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to these videos. We would love to know what you wanna see me food style next. That's a wrap. I guess broccoli is more chartreuse than green beans though. Cause I would say this is like, pine forest green, whereas that's leprechaun green.